S. Sushma, working as assistant professor in the department of PCE in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering College. In this session, we are going to discuss about the overlap add method. Filtering the long duration sequences has two methods, overlap save method and overlap add method. In that, we are going to discuss about the overlap add method. So, first of all, we have to know why we are going for overlap add method. So, here, filtering long duration sequences. In a real time signal processing scenario, an input signal is constantly fed into the DSP to be processed and the associate output is made ready without much delay. So we are going to give the input to the DSP system. So we have to get the particular response via pen. Without delay, we have to do that process. So as the convolution is performed by dividing the long input sequence into different pixel size block, uh, sections, it is called section convolution. A long input, a long input sequence is given to the DSP system. This X of n whatever we are giving to the input to the system is a long duration sequence. When we are uh, performing the uh, filtering operation or TFT uh, operation, it is very difficult to process the uh, output without delay. So, we have to divide this long duration sequence into uh, subsections, fixed size sections. That's why it is called a sectioned uh, convolution. Okay. So, computing the DFT of a very long or even infinity sequence is not feasible. So, that's why we are going for the overlap add method and save method to perform the section convolution. We are dividing the long input sequence into pixel size blocks and that particular uh, con uh, uh, fixed size input blocks will be perform the convolution with the impulse response of the system to get the output response. So, uh, this uh, for that we have two procedures. Those are there are two methods for segmenting a long input signal into shorter blocks and processing them quickly using the DFT. So, here what, uh, what is the process here? We have the long input sequence, whatever the we are giving to the system, if it is a long duration sequence, then it is divided into relative short blocks that is x1 of n, x2 of n, x3 of n like that with the fixed sizes. So, these uh, blo the blocks will be then each individual block x1 of n and x2 of n and like that, these will be performed the circularly convolved with the impulse response of the system. If the impulse res response of the system has a short duration and the input has the long input sequence. So, then we will divide that input into shorter blocks and the particular blocks will be circularly convolved with the impulse response h of n. Then we will get the output responses of particular individual section blocks and then the output signal is reconstructed using the overlap add method and overlap save method. So here the, uh, we have two methods overlap save method and overlap add method for filtering the long duration sequences. So how to so divide the dividing these uh, long duration sequence into fixed uh, size blocks and after perform the circularly convolved with the impulse response, we will get the output responses. How to uh, reconstruct the total output response by using this overlap add method and overlap save method. Okay, in this session, we are going to discuss about the overlap add method. So here in overlap add method, so here determine the length m, which is the length of impulse response. So the if the system has if the system has input x of n which is a long duration sequence and we have output response y of n and it has the impulse response h of n. So if the impulse response h of n has the length capital M, so how many number of samples are there in h of n we should find out that is capital M and from that if we know M we can find out M minus 1. Then given input sequence x of n size of dft is n so we have to assume n value n is equal 5 6 so what is n means after the dividing on the input signal into blocks each block should contain capital n number of samples 
that is nothing but we have to assume this number of samples. If it has 5 samples, we should assume n is equal to 5. So, we uh, capital N represents the number of samples in the section the blocks. Number of samples in the section the blocks. So, we know already n is equal to L plus M minus 1. So, because this uh, we are performing linear convolution by using overlap add method and save method. So, the number of samples will be L plus M minus 1. Here, M is the number of samples in the H of N. N is the number of samples we are assuming here. And suppose N is equal to 5, N is in uh, the 5 or 6 or something we have to assume that value from that if you know n value and m value we have to find out what is l value okay so what is l means we have the inputs long duration input x of n we have to divide that samples into l samples so if uh, we have l is equal to 3 means this x of n uh, will be divided into 3 3 samples we have to mark as 3 3 samples in step 4, pad m minus 1 zeros to x k of n and pad l minus 1 zeros to h of n. So, to, we have to make the total length of the both sequences should be l plus m minus 1. Okay. So, we have to take l samples and we have to pad m minus 1 zeros. This we will see in step 5. Okay. And h of n uh, will be the number of samples for example 1 comma 1 comma 1. And L is equal 3 means we have to add 3 minus 1, 2 zeros we have to add for H of N. Okay, already the length of the H of N is M and this we are adding L minus 1. So, the length should be here M plus L minus 1 that is L plus M minus 1. So, we should make the length of the H of N is equal to the L plus M minus 1 by adding L minus 1 zeros. We are padding L minus 1 zeros here. In step 5, how to section the blocks of X of N? How to section the blocks of X of N? See here we are taking the long duration sequence X of N. First we have to mark the L samples. Then how to get the X1 of N from long duration sequence means here X1 of N in the overlap add method here we have to take the First L bits, first uh, L bits, so if suppose L is equal to 3 means first 3 bits of X of N to the X1 of N is followed by the M minus 1 zeros. Here M is the length of the H of N. From that we have to find out the M minus 1 and we have to pad M minus 1 zeros for that L bits. Okay. So the total length should will become n is equal to l plus m minus 1. Here we are assuming n is equal to 5 sample uh, in the step 2. So here the 5 sample should be get in the x1 of n. Like that in overlap add method for x2 of n, x3 of n, x4 of n. Next four, for x2 of n, next 4 bits, next 4 bits, l bits will come to the x2 of n followed by the m minus 1 zeros. We have to pad m minus 1 zeros here. And for x3 of n, we have to take the next L bits and we have to pad the M minus 1 zeros here. And for X4 of N also we have to take the next L bits and we have to pad M minus 1 zeros. These both X1 of N and X2 of N, X3 of N, X4 of N, we have to get the N samples in the each section block here. So here the total number of samples will be L plus M minus 1 in the each uh, divided, uh, we are dividing X of N into X1 of N, X2 of N, X3 of N, X4 of N. Here, each um, block should contain N is equal to L plus M minus 1 sample. After getting the X1 of N and X2 of N, X3 of N, X4 of N, we have to perform circular convolution with the impulse response of the system H of N. So, H of N, if the system has... Impulse response H of N and input is X of N. We are uh, section this X of N into dividing into X1 of N and X2 of N, X3 of N. We are dividing into blocks here. So, we have to perform circular convolution with the impulse response of the system. Each block should perform circular convolution with the 
h of n and then we will get the particular output responses as y1 of n, y2 of n, y3 of n, y4 of n. Here total output response is y1 of n but we are getting here y1 of n, y2 of n, y3 of n and y4 of n. Okay, like that we will get here. Then what, uh, what we have to do, we have to reconstruct y of n from this or individual output responses. So in overlap add method, here in overlap add method, so here we are getting the y1 of n and y2 of n and y3 of n and y4 of n. Okay. So here in, in the y1 of n, last m minus 1 bits will be added with the y2 of n of m minus 1 bits of the y2 of n. First m minus 1 bits of the y2 of n. And y2 of n last m minus 1 data, m minus 1 bits will be added to with the starting m minus 1 bits of the y3 of n. And y3 of n uh, last m minus 1 bits will be added with the first m minus 1 bits of the y4 of n. Here in overlap save method, we will discard first m minus 1 bits, but in our app uh, add method, here we have to add last m minus 1 bits with the first m minus 1 bits with of the y2 of n and y2 of n m last m minus 1 bits with the y3 of n uh, first m minus 1 bits and from the y3 of n minus m minus 1 last bits with the y4 of n first m minus 1 bits. And we have to get the particular final output data sequence y of n. This is the procedure of overlap add method. So here we have another one main challenge in a real time processing scenario is that the timing of completing a block convolution needs to be appropriately synchronized with the overall output speed so that the tail region may be added to the ne next block at the right time. So here in the y1 of n, y2 of n, y3 of n and y4 of n, we are adding last bits with the first bits here. Okay, in real time processing, in real time processing scenario, the timing is very important. We have to do convolution uh, with the high speed. Then only the overall output speed so that the tail region, whatever the tail region is there, the last m minus n bits, the tail region may be added to the next block at the right time. Otherwise, delay will be occurred. If the process of convolving each block is slower than the output to the samples of blocks already convolved, then the tail region will not have opportunity to be processed to the next block. So, the next block is still in the process of going through the convolution. So, here if, uh, if, the, if uh, one block is delayed, then the Next block is still in the process of going through the convolution. So, resulting the erroneous output of the samples 0 to m minus 2, 0 to 0 to m minus 2 and L to L plus m minus 2 uh, for each block. So, 0 to m minus 2 and L to uh, L plus m minus 2. So, these blocks will get, we, we will get erroneous output. So, if one block is in the uh, convolution process in the delayed uh, output, then the total output will be uh, get the erroneous output. So, one way to deal this is to slow down the rate of output. So, which many fail to meet the timing requirements for a given application. Another more attractive approach is to speed up the process. So, um, we have to speed up the process of the convolution each of the each block. So, uh, that is x1 of n circular convolution with the h of n and x2 of n circular convolution with the h of n, x3 of n circular convolution with the h of n. So, so, like that we have to speed up the this convolution process. So, how to increase the uh, speed of the convolution process is by through the using the FFT fast Fourier transform. So, how to perform this uh, circular convolution using FFT means here. First, we will discuss the procedure just uh, how to perform this circular convolution with the FFT. Then, we will uh, discuss the procedure here. First of all, what is FFT means fast Fourier transform. It will convert the time domain signal into frequency, discrete time domain samples into frequency domain samples. So, here, x, uh, suppose I have x of k, 
Exafin is after performing F F T, we we are going to get X of K and H of N. If we perform F F T past for your transform, it will convert time domain impulse signal into frequency domain impulse signal. If we multiply these two, the convolution is nothing but multiplication of the frequency domains signal is equal to the convolution of particular. samples convolution of particular signals okay so for that we are going using fft to increase the speed of this convolution here we are converting the signals into frequency domain signal and they just we are performing multiplication uh, by sample by sample and again we are to convert the resulting output uh, uh, into the uh, time domain signal by applying the inverse fast fourier transform so suppose i am getting here y of k so again i have to perform inverse fast fourier transform then i i will get the frequency domain signal into time domain signal so this is the main procedure uh, main the application of fft in the convolution the multiplication of the uh, frequency domain signal is equal to the uh, convolution of the uh, time domain signal so that's why we are using fft here to increase the uh, speed of the convolution process so here we would like to filter the blocks of input to filter these blocks quickly so which means the use of the fast fourier algorithm is necessary to implement the associated process in the frequency domain so here first what we have to do we have zero pair the filter h of n with the l minus 1 zeros to make it length l plus m minus 1 so first we have to take the what is m value in second step and we have to find out the m minus 1 m is the number of samples in the impulse response of the particular system and by assume n value and add the from that find out the l value and add the l minus 1 zeros pair the l minus 1 zeros to h of n to make the length equal to the l plus m minus 1 and we have here we have we know what is h of n and we know the how to divide uh, long duration sequence into x1 of n x2 of n into the blocks by adding the l samples from the x of n and m minus 1 zeros to the uh, uh, l samples uh, the then we will get the x1 of n and x2 of n so compute the l plus m minus 1 effect of the zero padded h of n Result of step one and save. So we have to perform H of F F T for H of N. We are going to get the frequency domain sample H of K and zero pad each L block input segment segment X K of N with the M minus one zeros and make the length equal to the L plus M minus one. So we have to find out the X one of N, X two of N, X three of N like that. Okay, and uh, we have to divide the long duration sequence into Um, section blocks by adding the m minus one zeros uh, to the l samples from the x of n, and uh, then compute the l plus m minus one f f t of the zero parallel result. So we have to uh, find out the fast Fourier transform. So we have to convert these time domain samples of the individual blocks into frequency domain samples. So for that we have to apply fast Fourier transform. then we will get the frequency domain samples here frequency domain samples of particular block then what we have to do multiply the sample by sample of two fft results from step 2 and step 4 that is nothing but we know what is h of k that is by applying fft for the impulse response we are going to get h of k and by applying the fft to the individual section blocks then we will go, we are going to get x1 of k x2 of k like that so we have to multiply the each section frequency domain sample with the frequency domain uh, uh, impulse response then we are going to get the which is equal to the Uh, circular convolution of particular uh, outputs so here we are going to get y1 of k and y2 of k and y3 of k 
So when of k, y of k, y of k, or uh, we have to get in time in terms of time domain. So again, we have to apply the inverse fast Fourier transform to the frequency domain out uh, response to then to convert into time domain sample. So y k of n. So again, we got the y one of n, y two of n, y three of n. Then how to get the output y of n? How to get the uh, output y of n? So after each block y k of n is computed as a work, it is added to the next block as shown in figure. So here we have the y one of n, same as procedure we discussed in the last slide. So here we have y three of n. Last m minus one. Points of the y one of n will be added to the first m minus one points of the y two of n. So last m minus one uh, samples of the y two of n will be added to the first m minus one bits of the y three of n. Like that, we have to add and we have to get the particular output response. So this is the procedure using FFT to increase uh, the speed of the convolution process. So we will discuss one problem here. Uh, by using Voila third method. So here, given x of n three minus one zero one three two zero one two one and impulse response h of n uh, is one comma one comma one, perform linear convolution using Voila third method. So here we have long duration sequence x of n and uh, we, when we, we we have to perform convolution with the h of n, which has the Short duration sequence h of n. So, how by using overlap method, we have to perform the uh, convolution here. So, in step one, first take h of n. H of n has one comma one comma one. Then find out m. M is the number of samples in the h of n. That is length of the h of n. So here we have three samples in h of n. So I am going to write here m is equal three. And find out m minus one. M is three. M minus one is equal two. And let us assume n is equal phi here. I can assume n is equal phi is uh, anything. We will get the same answer. Let us assume n is equal phi here. So n is equal l plus m minus one. So here we know n value and m minus one value. So phi is equal l plus three minus one. So then l will become phi minus two three. So find out the l value. So uh, L is three here. We have to add this L minus one is two. Uh, we have to add L minus one zeros to the H of n. So add L minus one zeros to the H of n. So H of n has the only one comma one comma one. So we have to add L minus one means two. Two zeros. We have to add H of n to uh, make the length is equal to the L plus M minus one. L is two. M is three minus one. L is three, M is three minus one. That is five. So I should get five samples in H of n. So we add L minus one zeros to H of n to make the length is equal to the L plus M minus one. So here, input uh, how to section the long duration sequence into sub blocks here means see here for X one of n. First, we have to L, L. We have the three and M is equal three. M minus one is equal two. Okay, so we have to mark three three L values, three three samples. Okay, and in first X one of it, it will uh, you will get the L samples, L samples from X of n. So these three my three minus one zero will come here. Three minus one zero will come here. Is followed by m minus one zeros. We have to add m minus one zeros. So m minus one is two. So two zeros we added. So the total length is equal. We assumed n is equal five. So we should get each individual section block should contain five samples. So three minus one zero zero zero. So which is equal to the length n is equal to l plus m minus one. Okay. So again, for x two of n, now next uh, new section and uh, new l samples are one, three, two. So those uh, l samples will come here. One, three, two is followed by the m minus one. These one, three, two will come here, and m minus one zeros will be added here. So zero comma zero. 
and next L has the 0, 1, 2. So, here we will get this next L samples for X3 of N and is for added with the N minus 1 zeros. And for X4 of N only we have one sample. So, only that one will come remaining. We should get the length is equal to the N is equal to 5 samples. So, the length of the X4 of N should is equal to the 5 samples. So, the remaining bar bits, whatever bits we have, uh, that we should make is equal to 0, 0 and last bits are m minus 1, 0. So, totally we will get 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, this is the procedure in the overlap add method to uh, section the long duration sequence into sub-blocks x1 of n, x2 of n, x3 of n, x4 of n. Okay, so the first samples uh, will be first L samples from L samples from X of N and followed by M minus 1 0. For X2 of N, next L samples and M minus 1 0. For X3 of N, next L samples and M minus 1 0. X4 of N, whatever the remaining bits are there, one and remaining bits, I should make them is equal to 0. The length of the each block should is equal to the N is equal 5 sample. Okay. Then we have to perform circular convolution here. So here we have to perform individual block uh, uh, is circularly convolved with the impulse response of the system. So x1 of n uh, circular convolved with the h of n. So that is here they represent a general form as yk of n is equal xk of n circularly convolved with the h of n. Okay. So if k is equal 1, y1 of n is equal to x1 of n circularly convolved with h of n. For k is equal to y2 of n, x2 of n circularly convolved with the h of n. So like that we have to perform the individual blocks will be circularly convolved with the impulse response h of n. Impulse response here in the problem they gave 1 comma 1 comma 1 but we have to take h of n with the l minus 1 uh, pad, uh, padding the l minus 1 zeros here. Okay, so that's why here for k is equal 1, y1 of n is equal x1 of n circularly convolved with the h of n. So here x1 of n, what we got here? 3 minus 1, 0, 0, 0. So write down that one, 3 minus 1, 0, 0, 0, circularly convolved with the h of n is 1, comma 1, comma 1, 0. After adding uh, l minus 1, 0, 0, comma 0. So here we are going to get 3. So, here we have different methods for circular convolution like uh, concentric circle method, matrix method. Here we are going to use the matrix method 3, minus 1, 0, 0, 0. So, again, uh, how to write this one? So, this 0 will come to the first sample and these samples will come down. So, 3, minus 1, 0, 0. Again, this 0 will go to the first sample and these samples will we have to shift to, to the down. 0, 0, 0, 3, minus 1. Again, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 3. If we rotate this again, uh, this last sample, then we will get the first row. So, we should stop here, which is equal to the length of the H of N. So, here, this is X1 of N is uh, from sorry, matrix method. So, H of N, we have to write it in the column. This is H of N. After performing the matrix multiplication, we are going to get the result is this one. This is your Y1 of N. Okay. By using which method we are matrix method for circular convolution we are performing here. Okay. For Y2 of N, we have the samples of X2 of N is 1, 3, 2, 0, 0 and impulse response is 1, 1, 1, 0. Same procedure we have to write 1, 3 by using matrix method for circular convolution, perform the circular convolution by using matrix method. So, the last sample will come first and this will come down 3, 2, 0 and 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 2 will come to the first and these samples will come down and 3, 2, 0, 0, 1. If we again rotate the last sample, we will get the first row. So, stop it here. This is x2 of n. And we are going to get 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. This is h of n. We have to write in the column matrix. And we are going to get the output. This one. This is our 
matrix by matrix multiplication of x to of n and h of n here we are going to get the y to of n for x3 of n we have the x3 of n is 0 1 2 0 0 first we have to write in the column and rotate the last sample to the first and these samples will come down so 0 0 0 0 1 2 0 0 0 0 1 2 And circularly, this is x3 of n. Impulse response matrix right in the column. And we will get the y3 of n is 0, 1, 3, 2, 2. By matrix multiplication, first row with the column. And uh, second row with the column like that we will perform here. This is y3 of n. And for y4 of n, we have last only, we, the remaining bit is 1. And we added uh, next bits are 0, 0, see here. So here we will perform first write down x3, x4 of n and rotate these samples by 1. This is x4 of n is multiplied with the 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. This is h of n. We will get the 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. This is y4 of n. Okay. Otherwise, in the other procedure, what we have to do? For h of n, apply FFT. We will get the h of k. And for x1 of n, x2 of n and x3 of n, apply fast Fourier transform algorithm and we will get the capital H of x1 of k, x2 of k, x3 of k and multiply each x1 of k block with the in, uh, frequency domain samples of the x1 of, uh, x1 of n and h of n and we uh, will get the which is equal to the convolution of the both samples in the time domain sample. So here we will get the y1, y1 of k and y2 of k, y3 of k and apply inverse for, uh, for Fourier transform for this y1 of k, y2 of k and y3 of k and by using overlap add method reconstruct the output. This is a procedure by using FFT. So but we are doing here directly we are performing circular convolution in the problem. Okay, so here after performing, we are getting the outputs y1 of n, y2 of n, y3 of n, y4 of n. But how to perform? How to perform this? How to perform this? Uh, reconstruct y of n by using overlap add method here. So here we have the individual outputs here. Three uh, output uh, responses 3, 2, 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 4, 6, 5, 2, and 0, 1, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so here we have to add these individual. So last m minus 1, m minus 1 is here 2. Okay, so the last two bits of the y1 of n, so minus 1, 0 will be added here, added with the First m minus 1 bits of y to 1, m is equal to, so the first bits are 1, 4 here. And the last m minus 1 bits of uh, y to of n, last 2 bits, m minus 1 is here 2. So the last 2 bits will be added with the first 2, uh, two bits of y3 of n. The last 2 bits of y3 of n will be added with the first 2 bits of y4 of n, that is m minus 1 bits. So here the first sample is 3, directly it will come, 3, it, 2 it will come. 2 it will come here. See here minus 1 plus 1, 0. So here the sample here we are getting is 0 and 0 plus 4 we are getting 4. And this is 6. Directly we are getting 6 here. Again 5 plus 0, 5. 2 plus 1, 3. And this 3 is coming here. Again 3 plus 1, 4. 2 plus 1, 3. 1, 0, 0. Here this is the reconstructed output by using overlap add method. So last two bits will be this m minus 1 
bits we have to discard it in overlap admitter. So the final output via pen will become here 3, 2, 2, 0, 4, 6, 5, 3, 3, 4, 3, 1. This is final output response using overlap add method. So here the difference between over, overlap add method and overlap save method is. So here in this overlap save method, in this method L samples of the current segments and M minus 1 sample of the previous segment forms the input data block. So here if we are taking if, uh, to form the X1 up in and X2 up in, first here if we will add the M minus 1 zeros and L samples from the X1 up in and in X2 up in the M minus 1 bits last M minus 1 bits of the X1 up in will come here and next it is uh, L samples of the X up in ok for X3 up in last M minus 1 bits of X2 up in last M minus 1 bits of X2 up in L samples from X like that we will section the long duration sequence into sub blocks but in overlap add method in x1 of n for x2 of n or x3 of n l samples from x of n and m minus 1 zeros so each section will be m samples and m minus 1 zeros l samples and m minus 1 zeros l samples from the x of n next to new uh, l samples for the x2 of n like that so in this method l samples from input sequence paired with the m minus 1 zeros so the, these are the two different methods for overlap save method and overlap add method to uh, divide the long duration sequence into subsection blocks here segmenting the blocks input blocks. So in initial m minus 1 samples of output sequences are discarded which occur due to aliasing effect. So for the y1 of n, y2 of n after performing circular convolution with the impulse responses of particular block we will get here. So y1 of n, y2 of n. We have to discard first m minus 1 bits from the each output responses of the particular blocks in the overlap save method but in the overlap add method in overlap add method we have to add last last m minus 1 bits with the first m minus 1 bits so these two m minus 1 bits will be added in the overlap add method so to our here we are, after, uh, we are discarding these bits so we will get the aliasing effect which occurs due to aliasing effect. Here there will be no aliasing effect in the overlap add method, there will be aliasing effect in the overlap save method. So to avoid loss of data due to aliasing last m minus samples of each data record are saved. In the uh, this one last m minus samples of current output block must be added to the first m minus 1 samples of next output block hence call as overlap add method. This is These are the main differences for the overlap save method and overlap add method. How to segment the input sequences and how to reconstruct the output sequences. So this is the uh, difference between the two procedures. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.